welcome back. I'm just carrying on now. Uh, stage two of my moles introduction uh, on a new video. And I previous video, I, I had this on the board. I was talking about, in terms of mass, when you're dealing with real chemicals, number of moles is mass over MR value. Learn that. Understand that. Do some calculations with that. Get your mind around it. That is one of three crucial equations, mathematical equations, that you need to do this mathematical topic. So what about gases? Well, gases are even easier. There's a strange property they have. So number of moles of a gas N is volume of the gas, if you've got litres, divided by 24. You see, the strange thing about gases is whether the gases are made of small particles or big particles, a mole of them always, always, always weighs, sorry, not weighs, a mole of them always, always, always have a volume of 24 litres. So 24 litres at room temperature and pressure is what you need to learn for GCSE. 24 litres of room temperature and pressure for any gas, any gas, will have a volume of 24 litres. And so, the number of moles, if you know the volume in litres, divided by 24, so you've got 6 litres, divided by 24, a quarter of a mole. If you had 24 litres, that's a full mole. If you have like 48 litres, that's 2 moles. And to try and explain this, because a lot of my pupils find this a bit strange, Sir, doesn't the size of the particles matter? Well, the way I want you to think about it is, Say you've got a balloon of hydrogen. These are the particles of hydrogen. There, in that balloon. Carbon dioxide particles are much bigger. Carbon dioxide particles are like 20 times bigger compared to the hydrogen particles. So let's look at 24 litres of hydrogen and compare it to 24 litres of carbon. The particles being bigger just occupy more of the space or the vacuum that is between the particles themselves. You see, there's, there's nothing between the particles. Nothingness. And the extra size of carbon dioxide, well, the extra size occupies that nothingness, that space. It does not add to the overall volume. The volume of gases is like caused by them bouncing off the sides and it's this bouncing off the sides that gives you vo volume of gases it's not to do with the size of the particles because whatever particles you've got they will they will just be there and the bigger particles occupy more of the space the nothingness that's around them um, so both of these, one mole, 24 litres of hydrogen, 24 litres of carbon dioxide, 24 litres of anything, of any gas. And that's the second of my three equations that you need to deal with moles calculations. You learn that one, that's the second one. Now, a couple of things I want you to learn. That um, one litre is... 1,000 centimetres cubed, and I hope you know that already, one litre is 1,000 centimetres cubed, but one decimetre is 10 centimetres. Now, one decimetre, 10 centimetres, what if you had 10 centimetres multiplied by 10 centimetres, multiplied by 10 centimetres, well... 10 times 10 times 10 is 1,000. And if it's centimetres times centimetres times centimetres, centimetres cubed is 1 litre. So why am I saying all of this? Well, I'm, you need to know that 1 decimetre cubed is exactly the same as saying 1 litre. And our syllabus... We'll call it a decimeter cubed. Our syllabus 
may call it a litre, but it's more likely to call it a decimetre cubed. And a decimetre cubed is exactly the same as a litre. And the reason for that is a decimetre cubed would be a, a cube that's 10 centimetres by 10 centimetres by 10 centimetres. That kind of cube would be one litre. So this terminology, dm cubed, dm to the power 3, simply means litre. I might write litres, I might write decimetre cubed. The exam questions are more likely to go for decimetre cubed. They might give you centimetres cubed, and you divide by a thousand to turn them into litres. So centimetres cubed, decimetres cubed, litres, whatever you're given, you have to be able to deal with. Let's rub this out and go on. There we are. Right, so, I think I've said this before, number of moles of a gas. So when we're dealing with gases, now this is specifically at room temperature and pressure. So it's atmospheric pressure, 25 degrees temperature. And if the pressure is not atmospheric or the room is not at 25 degrees, then you get numbers that are not exactly 24 there either above or below 24 depending upon the temperature etc but the exam boards nearly always say room temperature and pressure RTP RTP means room temperature and pressure and when we've got RTP room temperature and pressure then it's 24 litres then you can use that equation it, number of moles is volume of the gas in litres divided by 24 learn the second really important equation and this equation of course can only be used with gases. You see, you can measure the volume of a gas. You can also measure the mass. And if you've got the mass, you can't use this. You've got to use the previous equation. You know, the previous equation I told you was about masses. So there's a masses equation. That was the first one. This one is a gases equation. This one involves volume. The, the first one is anything, solid, liquid, gas. As so long as you can weigh it, then you can measure the mass of it. So the first one measures masses. Second one here, this one measures volume. And there's one left, which is to do with solutions. So how do we deal with solutions? Well, solutions we deal with by understanding that in solutions... You've got something doing the dissolving, that's a solvent. You've got something dissolved within it, that's called a solute. And solute with solvent makes a solution. And the concentrations are given to quantify it, to write it down. You write how many moles of solute. So here you've got to count how many moles of solute, or work it out, per litre per litre of solution. So if I had one litre and in it was one mole dissolved, that would be a concentration of one mole per litre. If I had two and a half moles dissolved in a litre, that would be two and a half moles per litre. If I had like two moles dissolved in half a litre, two moles in half a litre is the same as four moles in a litre. So four moles per litre. It's always the units of concentration are moles per litre. So with solutions, with solutions, you have to measure volume and concentration using the correct units. So let me do it here. M is volume times concentration. So that's number of moles, N. That is the volume in litres, and that's the concentration in moles per litre or litres which we dm cubed moles per litre is mol dm to the minus three so concentration has to be converted if you've got any other units you have to work out how much it would be per litre and then you use this equation then you put it into this equation and the volume of your solution 
Whatever volume you've got, you might have centimeters cubed, you've got to divide by a thousand to get liters. Get liters, and then the liter value you can put in there. If you put the concentration volume in there, then volume, volume multiplied by concentration, together, multiply them together, that gives you a number of moles that you've got dissolved within that solution. And there is my three equations, or there are my three equations. What I was going to say, which I haven't said, is that year, year 11 chemistry, year 11 chemistry to do with concentrations, we talk about this concentrations and then we do titration experiments. I hope you recognize that, those kind of experiments we do. We have like an acid reaction with an al alkali. You put the alkali in there, you put the acid in there, you run the acid into the alkali, you have some indicator, phenylthalein indicator is a good indicator, indicator to tell you when the acid and alkali have just reacted. You know the concentration of one, you don't know the concentration of the other, and you've got to calculate it. These are moles problems. And we leave that till year 11, because year 11 is fundamentally... When you're a bit older, a bit more mature, you tend to understand those ideas a little bit better. I'm dealing with it all in one go. But your schools may deal with it in two separate uh, uh, moles topic attempts. Now, some terminology that you sometimes need. So these, these things are called burettes. That thing is a pipette. You need to know what a pipette is, you need to know what a burette is, you need to know how to carry out titrations. So the three equations, all summarised. Learn these three equations. That one is for any pure chemical. Any pure chemical, you can measure the mass of it. Gases, solids, liquids. You can use that equation, so long as they're pure. With gases, at room temperature and pressure, I, I need to write it at room, te at room temperature and pressure. Any pure gases at room temperature and pressure is the number of moles is volume in litres divided by 24. And any pure solution, solution is what I've just been whispering on about. You multiply the volume in litres, multiply by the concentration in, Moles per litre. They are your three equations. And those three equations are what you need to do calculations. And there is a standard method. I want you to know how to do calculations. And I'll talk to you about it in a minute. Let me just rub out these things. That's my method. Now, you may think that you've got your own method. You may think your method is better. You may like write sentences and scale up the sentences. I, I, I've tried all of that in my 35 years of teaching. Um, this is the method. Any other method that you've got, it's not as good. You might think it's good. If you want to go ahead with it, good luck to you. If you want my advice, this is the bee's knees. You have to do it this way. This way, you are most successful. This way, gets you into the question. This way, the confusion lifts and you tend to get down into the calculation really quickly. So, I'm going to tell you what the method is, my method. I hope you use it, but if you don't want to use it, yeah, it's up to you. Okay, so what is the method? Well, in every moles problem, you have one chemical here. And then you have another chemical here. Like fist reacts with hand. Like one chemical reacts with another chemical. 
and they give you information about one chemical like the fist and they want you to work out something about the hand. So it's always the mole's calculations of first chemical, work out something about the second chemical. And so what I want you to do is learn the three equations about masses, volumes and solutions. Learn the three equations. Step one is work out number of moles. Number of moles of the first chemical. The first chemical you've got, work out number of moles of it. You're going to have to look at data in the question. Find some data, find some mass, and then you know it's the first equation. Or if it's a volume for a gas, then you know that's going to allow you to work out the number of moles of it. Or if, it's, if you've got a concentration, then the concentration value will allow you to work out number of moles of it. So definitely, you'll be able to work out this step here. Step one, calculate the number of moles of one chemical where you've got enough data for that one chemical. And that gets you straight into the moles calculation. So, step one. I, I, I will do three examples to lead you through this. That's step one. Step two. Step two is, now you've worked out number of moles of this, you need to know how one chemical, the first chemical, how it reacts with the second chemical, you need to know how they react. And we, in chemistry, have balanced equations that tell us how they react. So you need next a balanced equation for the reaction. You write down a balanced equation for the reaction. Sometimes they will give you the balanced equation. But sometimes you have to derive it and write it yourself and work it out from general equations you learn as part of your revision, etc. You write the balanced equation is next. Now, in a balanced equation, you write that next. The big numbers tell you how many moles you've got. So when you write the big, so when you write the balanced equation, make sure it's balanced with the big numbers in, and then the big numbers tell you the ratios. They tell you the ratios of how many fists react to how many uh, hands. You know, like it might be like two lots of fists react with one lots of hand, two to one. The ratio is two to one. The balanced equation will tell you the ratios. When you know the ratios, then you can work out number of moles of the second chemical. Because you, you know the number of moles of one chemical. If you know the number of moles of the second chemical is double, then you can work out number of moles of the second chemical, if you know the first. It's that idea for this step two. Step two, you write a balanced equation. And from the balanced equation, use the concept of ratios to work out number of moles of my second second equation and when you've got the number of moles of second equation then you're in a position to answer the question and what you do now is you're going to have to read the question to see what the question want and what you're going to have to do is to use the three equations again but only one of them one of the three equations and answer the Question. So if they want like a concentration, it'll be the concentration equation you use. If they want a volume, it'll be the gases equation you use. If they want a mass, it'll be the mass equation you use. And it will always be about the second chemical. So having worked out number of moles of the first chemical, having got a balanced equation, having derived by ratio terms the number of moles of the second chemical, now you use one of the three equations again to work out an answer for your problem. And that's what step three says. Step three says, now you're gonna to have to use some mathematical equation, one of those three equations, use them to answer the question. Let's do some examples. So you can see this very powerful technique. Now, the technique, the moles topic, technique, as I call it, the moles method, will serve you the whole of GCSE, and it will serve you the whole of A-level. It's such a powerful technique. I strongly recommend you follow it. Let's see it in action. 
So, I've got three problems to work through. Example one is about moles and masses. So, I've got eight grams of sodium, eight grams of sodium, burn in air completely. Calculate the mass of sodium oxide that would be made. That's typical GCSE problem. Well, how do you start it? Can you see, when boys and pupils try and do this, they don't know where to start. Well, the moles method gets you in. Which is the only chemical you can work out number of moles of? Eight grams of sodium. Sodium. Get your period tables out. A mole of sodium weighs 23 grams. On a period table, sodium, a mole of it weighs 23 grams. And you've got eight grams. So number of moles is this equation here. Number of moles of sodium. Now this little n, the n can be used as an abbreviation for number of moles. Number of moles of sodium, number of moles of what's in the bracket, number of moles of sodium is eight grams, eight grams here, divided by 23, which is on a periodic table. For one mole of sodium is 23 grams. So that's the first chemical, done. Step one, done. Second step, you want a balanced equation. Balanced equation for what? Well, it's a burning. Eight grams of sodium burns. The burning of sodium. You need a, a balanced equation. And from that balanced equation, the second chemical. Calculate the mass of sodium oxide. So sodium oxide is your second chemical. And that second chemical, sodium oxide, what does it want you to work out? Oh, it's mass of it. So you're going to have to use that first mathematical mass equation again to get the answer. Let's have a look at the second step. Second step, balance equation. Sodium burns with oxygen, makes sodium oxide. To balance it, you need a 4 and a 2. That tells you 4 moles of sodium. The big numbers represent moles. 4 moles of sodium react with, the big number there is 1, 1 mole of oxygen gas, making 2 moles of sodium oxide. Now, that was our first chemical. 4 moles of sodium makes 2 moles of sodium oxide. The ratio is 4 to 2. The ratio of 4 to 2 is 2 to 1. So the number of moles of the oxide, sodium oxide, the number of moles of sodium oxide is half. The important word in step 2 is half. You're going to have to have half of the number of moles of sodium. Now the number of moles of sodium we worked out here. Half the number of moles, half the number of moles of sodium is one half times 8 over 23, a half of 8 over 23 moles that you had before. So step two is not such a big calculation step. No, it's a compare the balanced equation and use the big numbers to get the ratios and the number of moles of that second chemical. And finally, we answer the question using the mass equation. So N is mass over MR, rearrange it, mass equals number of moles multiplied by MR. Now the MR value of sodium oxide. Now this, this one's to do with the second chemical, remember? Second chemical is sodium oxide. So the MR value of sodium oxide is sodium, sodium, oxygen, Na2O, 23 add 23 add 16, sodium being 23, two sodiums, another 23, the oxygen 16, all of that adds up to give you the MR value. And all of this is the number of moles here, number of moles of sodium oxide. Number of moles of sodium oxide is the same as that. And get your calculator out, work that out, you get 10.8 grams. And the industry standard, the chemistry standard, if they don't tell you what accuracy to use, I want you to use three significant figures. Three sig figs. So, 3SF, 10.8. Powerful method. Number of moles of one chemical. Balanced equation. Number of moles of the second chemical by inspection. Answer the question using one of these equations. Bearing in mind, 
you have to read the question to know what you want. That's it. That's a mole's method. Powerful method. Second example. I just want you to see that in first step, second step, third step. Right. Now, the second method involves gases. You can see that. Moles and gases. So I want to have a volumes question here. If 25 grams of calcium carbonate, well, that's not a volumes question. Well, just, just, just bear with me. Reacts with loads of hydrochloric acid. Calculate the volume of carbon dioxide gas. There you go. Volume of carbon dioxide gas. So, how do we start it? Well, which is the chemical you can work out number of moles of? 25 grams of calcium carbonate. 25 grams of calcium carbonate. So calcium carbonate is calcium carbonate. Number of moles of calcium carbonate is 25 divided by an MR of calcium carbonate. Calcium is 40, carbon is 12, oxygen is 16, 316 is a 48. Add all that up, you get 100. 25 or 100, 0.25 moles. So it's a quarter of a mole. Chemical one, quarter of a mole. Step two, balance equation. Calcium carbonate with hydrochloric acid, you've got loads of acid. Makes calcium chloride and water and carbon dioxide. That's like carbonate plus acid makes salt, carbon dioxide and water. Right, number of moles of the second chemical. Remember the second chemical? Volume of carbon dioxide. The volume of carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide, that's the second chemical. The first chemical is this one. How is the number of moles of the first chemical, how is that linked to the number of moles of the second chemical? One mole of the first chemical makes a mole of the second carbon dioxide chemical. So it's one to one, one to one. So the number of moles of the second chemical carbon dioxide equals the same. The, the important word here in step two is the same. It's not half or double. The word to use is, it's the same. And it was a quarter, wasn't it, of the first chemical? So the second chemical number of moles will be a quarter, 0.25. And finally, answer the problem, but we want a volume, and therefore you're going to have to use the volume mathematical equation that deals with gases. Here, using number of moles is volume over 24. Volume, rearrange it, is... 24 times number of moles, 24 times a quarter, 6 litres. Powerful method. Finally, I'm going to do a titration. Uh, before I do the titration, can you see step 1, step 2, step 3? Learn the method, moles method, and it will serve you well. And you will never get a great grade in chemistry... You can't do moles. There's higher level chemistry will always involve lots of moles marks. And you need to understand the ideas and use the ideas to do these calculations. And the moles method will serve you well in that process. Right, finally, moles and solutions. Now, when 0 0.500, no point half, when Half a mole per litre solution of sodium hydroxide will, in a titration, neutralise 20 centimetre cubes of one mole per litre nitric acid. So which is the first chemical you can work out the number of moles of? Well, with nitric acid, you've got a concentration and a volume. And that's what you need to work out the number of moles of a uh, solution. So here, number of moles of nitric acid is volume 20... Now, you've got to divide by 1,000 to get into litres. 20 over 1,000 to get litres, multiplied by the concentration, which was 1 mole per litre. And that gives you, work it out, 0 0.02 moles. Next, you need a balance equation. Nitric acid reacts with sodium hydroxide, acid, alkali, salt and water. Can you see? It's by, if it's balanced, the number of moles of sodium hydroxide, the second chemical, the number of moles of the second chemical is the same as the number of moles of the first chemical. And the first chemical was 0 0.02. And therefore, answer the question. We're going to use number of moles of volume times concentration. 
It wants what volume do you need? If you know the number of moles and concentrations of the second chemical. And the second chemical is sodium hydroxide. So the second chemical, the concentration is 0 0.5. 0 0.5. Number of moles is the same. 0 0.02. 0 0.02 over 0 0.05 is 0 0.04 litres. If you want that in centimetres cubed, you multiply by 1,000. 40 centimetres cubed. 40 centimetres cubed. I cannot stress how powerful that method is. Learn the method. And good luck with your calculations. But the best advice I can give you to do well is the next slide. Do lots and lots of calculations. Mathematical topics in mathematics or chemistry require practice and drill exercises. If you do lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of examples, and those lots of examples will give you the skills you need to do good moles. Okay, we'll stop there.